Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 2v2 on Vox Farmlands. Our heroes today are going to be... <laughs> These aren't my glasses, lol. <laughs> Playing as the Germans in the blue. His ally in the yellow is going to be Boris. Like a boys playing as the yellow OKW. Their opponents, as you may see up there in the list, in the red is going to be Von Ivan playing as the red Soviets. And in the pink, it is going to be Mr. Siberian playing as the pink US forces. Now, <laughs> these aren't my glasses, lol. At the very least, is known in the forums. He has his name as X1 Alpha 2. But. He's going to be glasses. Let's go ahead and close that out so it doesn't look too ugly there. And let's just take a look at the map. So we got combined versus combined. I um, mean, we got the OKW and the Ostir. Well, we have Germans or not Germans, uh, uh, Russians and uh, well, Soviets, I should say, and U.S. forces. We see that Mr. Glasses has gone for Tier 1, getting himself Grenadiers. Two Grenadiers already out, with a third one being produced. We have Mr. Jello here, the Mr. Boss, going for a Kubel Wagon and a Volkskrin Squad. Looks like the Kubel Wagon came out second. And then we have Von Ivan, who is currently engaging up in the north in the fuel point. He directly went with his combat engineers. To stop that point, Grants and Conscript supporting the worker units, and it looks like the Germans are winning this engagement. Combat Engineer Squad is forced to retreat. Pioneers hold strong at three men. They will be able to close the distance on those Conscripts. The Conscripts do need to get a little bit closer to the Grants to win the engagement, but with the Pyos on top of them, they managed to get enough damage in there to turn the tables down to one man on the pile squad, forces a retreat, but the conscripts are, have now been brought down to four men, four on four against Grenz. They are not going to win that engagement. They hold the ground a little bit longer just to be able to stop the point from getting decapped as long as possible. Deny it from your opponent as long as you can, but down to one man on that conscript squad and Von Ivan is forced to retreat. His build order came out with three conscripts off the bat, no tech for the Soviets, and that is currently what is happening. Conscripts in the north are trying to capture that victory point. We have two grand squads engaging them. They are on the losing end of that stick, but they will capture the point before they move. The grands are moving in to try to deny it, but no, they're a little bit further back. They just put themselves in light cover and will win the territory for now. Down in the south, we see the Kubel Wagon engaging the Riflemen for Siberian. Siberian went for three rifles to support their initial rear echelon squad. And unfortunately, since he is a U.S. Forces player, I can't actually tell whether he has, you know, researched anything or is in the process of researching any of his additional tech. But there you go. Interesting. Uh, Storm Pio squad repairing the Kubel Wagon in the middle of a fight. Takes a little bit of a loss there because the, obviously the worker units uh, do take additional uh, damage as they repair during combat until they get veterancy. I'm assuming uh, the Storm Pios get the benefits as well. Uh, enable squad to construct and repair objects faster, unlocks the construction grenade. Under fire and reduces the risk of repairing while under fire and increases the weapon lethality. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, like all other repair units, they get the. Uh, the bonus with their veterancy of <laughs> not sure what he's referring to but RNG got please referring to something but well we see the Kubel engagement in the center just wrecking the rifles rifles are forced to retreat and with the storm pious to repair it the Kubel wagon is at full strength and very hardy up in the north we have a rifle squad for Siberian coming into the mix against the grants of these aren't my glasses Second Grand Squad trying to support, although it is a little bit uh, away, it gets cut off. And we have a Combat Engineer Squad for Von Ivan with a flamethrower that could be used to flush out these Grands. The Grands, however, are already forced to leave the house as they get brought down to two men. And the rifles quickly take up their positions as they will be able to engage within the house. With the three men inside, they still provide the same amount of firepower. Keep in mind that this side of this house does not have a window, even though it does have a big-ass door that the units at side could clearly shoot from. The game mechanics do not allow the units to just simply shoot at what they can see. 
They have very defined rules. No, you cannot shoot through doors. You can only shoot through windows. That is how they teach it in the army. And that is how you shall do it. Grins up in the north getting burned pretty severely there by those combat engineers. They do end up having to retreat. We do have tier two now down for Von Ivan. Maxim machine gun on the field. Two Maxim machine guns to be exact. One Maxim machine gun heading up to the north as the rifle squad retreats from the north center map. Another rifle squad engaging the Volksprints at close range. Volksprints taking massive beating down to one man, but they do get uh, enough time to the, the storm pilots to get the flank and the uh, Kubo wagon behind them to provide a lot of firepower. Rifle squad forced to retreat at three men. A very low health five rifleman squad moving up against two storm piles. Not going to be winning that engagement. Forced to retreat as well. Still five men, but very low in health. There's about 25% strength left on that squad with no possibility of getting healed just yet. As we only have an M20 on the field for Siberian. The M20, however, now at a very dominant position. Going to be chasing down that Kubel wagon. Getting a lot of damage in there. The machine gun on top. A little bit focused on the infantry. It does want to kill infantry a little bit more badly. Oh, M20 running straight into the... Uh, Oh, oh, there he goes. <laughs> I thought that was a whiff, but running straight into the path of that Grand Squad manages to still catch that Kubel Wagon while it runs away. Second foul is going to be going off on the M20. Nails it in the front. The damage on the engine already had been occurred because of the previous Faust. And the M20, it's still alive. However, we now have a Puma on the field. Smoke gets popped by the M20 and the crew pops out of the car to be able to utilize its bazooka. We have Storm Pyos nearby to the crew. They could actually go for the steal. The, the, the crew quickly jumps back into their car and starts getting some nice damage in there on those Storm Pyos with its heavy 50 cal machine gun on top. It is very low in health and the Faust goes off by the Grand Squad, eliminating the M20 scout car and down goes... Well, is it scout car? No, it's a utility car, sorry. And down goes the, uh, the car for the uh, US forces. So the Allied forces no longer have any vehicles in play. We do have only a Puma on the field for the Germans, but the Puma will be providing quite a lot of firepower. We do have a Lieutenant on the field for Siberian. Hasn't got anything else from Tier 1 aside, well, utility car, obviously, that died. But, yeah, utility is getting, I mean, uh, Lieutenant is getting uh, harassed there by that Puma. We see that, oh, actually, both players on the Allied side have selected a Doctrine, Von Ivan. Well, as you can see, the paratroopers dropping in has obviously gone for the Airborne Company. And we see that Von Ivan went for the Soviet industry tactics. Ooh, interesting. We're going to be seeing a lot of tanks coming out very quickly. So far, nothing just yet, but, well, still needs to get ready, get that steam rolling. Uh, we also see that uh, Mr. Glasses is... Uh, Ally has gone for his own doctrine, and that is the Breakthrough Doctrine for Mr. Boss, and he gets himself a Fusilier Squad. Fusilier Squad somewhere. Where is it? There it is, coming out into the field. Down in the south, we see the Puma harassing a rear echelon squad. Brings it down to one man, in fact. Forces it to retreat. The Puma can't actually shoot it down and chase it down. Is it going to do that? It does not look like Boss is very... Uh, inclined to do that but well there you go do have mines getting laid down around this place here shoe mines for boys but he makes it out center map we have Volksgrins and Grenz engaging at the same time against a rifle squad rifle squad is forced to retreat and the paratrooper squad has gotten upgraded with of course the LMG I would like to see at least one time in one replay a paratrooper squad getting upgraded with those Thompson uh, some machine guns but I guess it's just not worth it. I mean, the LMGs are very hard to argue against. They're very, very strong. Puma in the center, getting uh, probably rifle grenaded by those uh, rifles. Uh, Anti-tank rifle grenade, obviously. Gets its engine damage and forces the uh, the back up a little bit. Grins nearby. Gonna push forward. We have paratroopers and conscripts in the center. AT gun as well, setting up down to the south to be able to provide. Oh, Volkskrin squad gets brought down to one man, gets eliminated on the retreat. Oh, and a massive rifle grenade goes off by one of the squads. Or there it is, that squad. Nailing the paratrooper squad down to one man. They barely make it out, but that paratrooper squad is much wiser not to clump up. Look at all those dead men. And to add insult to injury, the conscripts decide to just simply molotov their own men, incinerating them and bringing them closer to Valhalla, but... The rifle, <laughs> the rifle grenade lands on them as well and forces the retreat. Half track now in the center. For Mr. Glasses, gonna be able to provide a lot of support. 
Not currently getting upgraded with that flamethrower. Remember that the flamethrower upgrade now requires phase two. And to be in territory, of, of, of course. But it does not look like phase two has been acquired just yet. Uh, what is that getting called in? Oh, a drop, a weapon drop. It's a 50 cal machine gun. Yes, it looks like it's a 50 cal machine gun getting dropped onto the field for Mr. Uh, Von Ivan? No, Siberian, sorry. Oh, Siberian has gone for the Major already. Major, however, is currently being used for combat, not getting used as a portable retreat point just yet. He would require a ambulance, really, to be able to utilize that, and it does not look like that is what he is intending to do just yet. Rifles continue to push forward. 50 cal machine gun set up to cover the approach, getting a lot of damage in there on those troops. The Storm Pilot Squad is, even though in range of the half-track, taking a lot of damage, forced to retreat down to one man. Can he make it out? No! Down goes the Storm Pilot Squad. We do have a Puma on the flank of the 50 cal machine gun. 50 cal machine gun setting up again. Going to be covering the north as uh, weapons come down. No, it decides to reposition itself. It was not intended to shoot in that direction. Sets up once against the cover of the right approach. The Volksgrenadier Squad now getting shot. Getting suppressed out on the field. Shrek goes off, but it's units. It's not uh, cars or vehicles. And the rifles are going to be able to tank that quite easily. Puma moving up. We do have an AT gun on the field. The AT gun is a little bit out of... No, it actually it's right on the side, but it is being blocked by that hedge. It could attack around, but we see the uh, the paratrooper squad moving up on the Puma. The Puma going to be able to get a lot of damage in there. The AT gun sets up. Can it attack ground? It should attack ground. Can it take a shot? There goes a the shot. It misses completely, but at least it tried. Paratrooper squad's LMGs are not able to provide too much damage there on that Puma. It is an armored card. After all, it's not a tank, but it does take a little bit of damage. Rocket and Warfare, yes, the Rocket and Warfare is now on the field for Mr. Boys. Sets it up down south. But again, we see that the Allied players still have no vehicles in play. Aside from that M20 utility car that has long since been eliminated, they have yet to do anything, even with the industry tactics of uh, Von Ivan. Also, as a last note, we see that Mr. Glasses has gone for his own doctrine, and that is the Lightning War Doctrine. The Lightning War. A lot of engagements all over the place. We see a lot of troops playing around. We have a demolition charge on the field. This is not a friendly demolition charge. The half track is very close to it. He's going to detonate it. Yes, there it goes. Boom. There it goes. Oh, and it gets abandoned. Oh, that is not too good for the uh, Soviet players. Or Soviet player. Half track gets reacquired once again. The conscript Ura forward. They get in range for an 18-8. There goes the wind up. The pitch flies and nails it, getting it. This oh no, that's just a destroyed engine. The half track is still alive. The conscripts, I mean, yeah, the conscripts are pushing forward. The grens are getting reinforced on the fly. They need to just focus fire, and down goes the uh, half track. At least he gets that victory. And the half track has been eliminated from play. The grand squads are still on the field. They are currently getting buffed by something, but what is it? It's uh, the oh, that's the uh, the relief infantry. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Relief Infantry, and that calls in two um, Ostrupen squads. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Once upon a time, that confused me, but now I am quite aware that Ostrupen squad can be uh, acquired other without having the Ostrupen Doctrine. And that is by the Relief Infantry. Pack guns on the field. Setting up into the center. Yet again, we still see no vehicle play for the Allied players, we do see Von Ivan finally acquiring himself Tier 3 and getting a T-34. T-34 will be coming into play very quickly because of his Doctrine selection. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we can take a quick look at this. It's been a while, but yeah, I mean, he has that. The uh, Soviet industry and the build time, it's acquired at three command points. And he already has seven, so he's way past that. So yeah, we can now see that a T-34 will be coming out. And that will give the allies the push that they needed right there. Oh, and at the same time, we see a Jackson tank destroyer on the field for Siberian. Interesting choice going for a Jackson. I mean, so far, we only see a Puma on the field. I mean, yeah, the Puma will die quickly to the Jackson. That is for certain. But, I mean, I guess maybe he wants to get it out of play. It's an interesting choice. I mean... Considering that we haven't seen any real armor for the uh, for the German side, um, I mean, you would have expected a little bit of more of a uh, 
multi-purpose tank. Oh, <laughs> Jackson tank flying a little bit too close to the sun, gets itself and and Warford in the ass and <laughs> is forced to move up to the north. We do have the T-34 going up to the north as well. A nasty rifle grenade hits those conscripts up in the north. Gonna get the squad eliminated. Down to one man. The Grins are taking shots. Can they actually make it out? No, they, they don't. I mean, well... The Cossack Squad makes it out, they can't actually get the kill, and the Grants are forced to retreat. Jackson turns itself around to face the center, but it's still keeping distance. The Puma is down south, not moving around too much. We do see the T-34 up in the north running into the uh, Ostruppen. Remember, Ostruppen as well do have Faust. The T-34 realizes that and gets itself damaged. The Jackson Tank Destroyer could be helping out here to get it repaired. They could pop out. It's a little bit risky, but they could do that. Jackson Tank Destroyer going to be repairing, getting repaired first, but, yeah, I mean, they could eventually do that. No, they actually do decide to go for that. Ah, look at that. Look at that nice coordination between forces. Never has the U.S. and Russia gotten along so well. Now, down in the south or the center, I should say, we see a lot of troop movement here for the Germans. We have Fusiliers and more Fusiliers moving down to the center. Storm Pio is getting caught by a 50 cal machine gun. The Fusiliers as well just running straight out there. One of the squads gets a little bit of a thought in their head and decides to go for the flank. The Fusiliers, however, are numerous and able to push forward. They get themselves past the arc of fire of the 50 cal machine gun. 50 cal machine gun going to be cleared out here. Can the Fusiliers go for the steal? They can, in fact. The Major is forced to retreat and the 50 cal machine gun is there for the take and the Fusiliers are not taking the squad. However, T-34 up in the north getting in a very bad spot. Now getting shot at by two pack guns and getting fousted by the... Um, Ostruppen manages to break a line of sight to the pack guns, but the pack guns can still just attack around and kill it. And with uh, them just, you know, covering all zones, Jackson Tank Destroyer moves out of the way and just stays alive. Second T-34 moves in to get a nice flank there on the pack guns. The pack guns are a little bit flustered here. They're getting cleared out. One pack gun is down to two men. Can he take it out? Yeah, takes out the pack gun. Second pack gun takes a shot at the rear armor of that T-34. T-34 up in the north gets fousted in the ass by the uh, Ostruppen, but it stays alive. Pagan once again getting flanked. Lieutenant nearby to support, and the T-34s could provide some support here. Ostruppen squad going for the clutch pickup here of that, not really clutch, but of the pack gun. Pack gun is once again in play. The T-34 needs to clear it out. The lieutenant is in play. He throws a grenade. Down goes the pack gun, and a nice, nice control here by the uh, Allied forces up in the north. Paratrooper squad now Veteran C2 acquired with that LMG. We have conscripts of Veteran C2 shooting at the Fusiliers. And did we take the 50 cal machine gun? Yes, the 50 cal machine gun has been stolen by the troops of Mr. Boys. Like a boss, he takes it. And he now has somewhere. Ah, there it is. 50 cal machine gun in the center. Gonna be covering the point. Gotta get flanked there by those conscripts. The conscripts could quickly clear it out. We do have a Grand Squad with... Uh, G43s, oh, getting grenaded very nastily there by those uh, paratroopers. Remember, paratroopers have those cooked nades, so they're actually very difficult to to, uh, to dodge if you're not on point. Matov does go off into the Rakhnewerfer's face. The uh, Puma moves up to support. And there you go. Down south, we have another paratrooper squad for Siberian. Siberian now has two of those. And we still have the Major on the field. He sets up into the center. And he is currently being utilized to engage. What does he get? Weapon accuracy and increased duration for recon flight. Nice. Increases survivability of the squad. Increases number of shells dropped during rapid barrage. And adds fake barrage ability. Very nice. And add veteran T3. Movement speed of the squad. And established retreat point would lock down. Oh, 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 that I did not know. Wow, that is very potent. So uh, the major at veteran C3, it gets the nice little buff that has been introduced with uh, Western Front Armies where the unit moves quickly out of combat. But it... um. It says it locks down a friendly territory when established retreat point is uh, is set. That is actually pretty awesome. I mean, because you can basically, like, for example, this territory, put yourself in the very edge, uh, far away from the point, and you're still locking it down. Unless it's restricted to the very point itself, which is kind of stupid, but I don't think it will. That's very powerful, but it does require Veteran C3. But then again, the Major does get Veteran C3 for a nearby ally, so he doesn't actually have to be directly in combat, so... Hmm. Kind of makes me want to play it. <laughs> well, anyways, Tiger on the field for Mr. Glasses. Big push in the center by the German forces. They're running straight into a Maxim machine gun. Fusiliers are getting suppressed all over the place. Grand Squad are set up in heavy cover. We do have a AT gun also setting up into the center. Tiger moves up straight into the center. Going to tank those shots from the AT gun. And is quite capable of doing so. The Maxim machine gun gets cleared out. And the Fusiliers are right all up in their faces of that AT gun. The AT gun going to get cleared out. And either stolen or destroyed by the Germans. We'll see what they decide to do. 
And we do still have that Jackson Tank Destroyer up in the north, which is, even though only one, is actually quite a threat to a uh, Tiger. It does a lot of damage and a lot of range, so there you go. More T-34 is getting called onto the field for Mon Ivan. He is in full industry mode, just getting those tanks up and rolling. His infantry count is very low. He only has two conscript squads. Well, I should say one conscript squad. Wow, that squad got down. And uh, one conscript squad and a Maxim machine gun and combat engineer. So that's about it. He could set up a uh, repair point, which wouldn't be a bad idea, but we'll see if that ends up coming into play. Ulster open squad in the center. Not having too much luck here against those rifles. Going to get uh, killed if it doesn't retreat. There it goes. There goes the retreat. Can it still make it out? Down to two men. Yes, it does. There it does. Okay. So German forces setting up a nice front here in the center. Does act end up actually stealing the uh, the AT gun. And why wouldn't it? I mean, uh, Mr. Glasses does have Ostrup and they can uh, quickly get those uh, squads going and uh, pick up those weapons. So there you go. Makes it a lot more difficult as well for the, uh, the allied tanks to push forward. Lieutenant up in the north in a very bad spot. Going to be taken out. There it goes. Runs straight into the path of an MG42 or two MG42s, although one was a used to be friendly 50 cal machine gun. Maxim machine gun and Fusiliers up in the north. Well, actually, they're not friendly. So Fusiliers getting a flank of the Maxim machine gun, getting battered there by the tanks. Tiger pushing up to the north. Very confident because it is being supported by a stolen AT gun from the uh, Soviets. Oh, Paratrooper squad getting annihilated there by the Tiger. Can it make it out? Shot flies, barely manages to dodge that. Uh, we do have two Jackson Tank Destroyers on the field. Jackson Tank Destroyers getting a lot of damage there on that Tiger. Puma pushing up, putting itself in range of those tanks. Gets itself eliminated pretty quickly. Very, uh, very bold, but very stupid at the end of that Puma. Not quite what he wanted to do. Tiger does manage to make it out of there. It's going to get back to repairs. We do have a uh, re mechanized regiment headquarters nearby, which will be able to provide automated repairs. And up in the north, we see a big push by Alstrupen and Grenz for Mr. Glasses. going to be able to get a flank on all these tanks. These tanks are currently decrewed and getting repaired by the crews inside. A very risky situation, but a very necessary because they want to keep them in tip-top shape. Tiger pushing back out, still at about 75% strength, not its best uh, moment. We have a Maxim machine gun left there in the ground. LMG is getting equipped on those paratroopers, but they're going to get annihilated there by the Tiger. Shot flies, more guys go down. They continue to push forward, trying to get those points. Victory points are 427 left for the Germans, while 297 are only left for the Allies. We do have three T-34s now on the field for Von Ivan. Again, like I said, industry in full swing. We once again have relief infantry getting activated for Mr. Glasses. So it looks like he's going to be pushing forward with everything he's got as far as infantry goes to get those relief infantry back on the field. Remember, they are all stripping, but they are quite awesome. <laughs> Jackson Tank Destroyer is going for the crush up in the north of those infantry. Forces the uh, retreat of one of those grand squads. We have the Ostrupen squad uh, getting eliminated up in the north, only to call in another one. Remember, you don't actually need to lose those squads, but, I mean, they're Ostrupen, so I suppose they're not really too important, per se, but you may want to keep them alive. Engagement in the center. We have Boas pushing with his Fusiliers. Pushing down to the south. Down in the south, we have rifle squads going for the cap. And right now, even though it looks like Siberian doesn't have any vehicles, he does, actually. He has those Jackson Tank Destroyers up in the north. The uh, the squads or the uh, the crews were out of their tanks to provide some support and some capping ability, but they need to get back in there and uh, get those tanks repaired. The tanks are looking pretty haggard. They, uh, they've seen better days. AT gun up in the north, stolen one, just looking at those tanks, but not in range. Sorry about that. Second Tiger gets called in here for Mr. Glasses. Now he has a very strong force with those. We also see a, um, what is it called? The, uh, the Yak Tiger getting called in for Mr. Boys. So like a boys, he calls in the Yak Tiger. That is going to be very, very critical in this engagement because that gives it the range, the anti-tank capabilities against the massive swarm of tanks. But... The Tigers basically need to be covering the ass of the Yak Tiger. Because otherwise he's going to get flanked by all those tanks and get eliminated. Von Ivan setting up repair stations up in the north. Going to be able to get all his tanks very repaired very quickly. Which is probably going to be very important. 
Once again, he doesn't have too much in the way of infantry. He only has a combat engineer and a conscript. And that is it. AT gun up in the north taking shots at the... Uh, as previously old tanks. Down goes one of the T-34s. Not exactly what Von Ivan needed in this situation. He... Uh, he kind of needs to keep those tanks alive, especially with those repair stations, because the tanks are his mainstay. He does call in another one, still has three, but if he hadn't lost that one, well, he'd have four. Most trooping up in the north, uh, and going up. Oh, oh, that's a great nade! Oh, it landed in the water and didn't really do too much. T-34. Moving into support, the paratroopers as they push away three most trooping squad. We see the Tigers coming in for a nice run up to the north. We see the Jack Tiger lagging behind very severely. Going to be getting in range of those T-34s. The T-34s are um, not going to be able to take too many shots there by that Jack Tiger. But the Jack Tiger is slowly moving there. Nice shot flies at a distance, eliminating one of those repair stations. Repair stations are still three in count. They're back. There was one a little bit further forward, so that's why it died. And the Tiger has acquired... Huh, looked like it acquired veterans, but no, it didn't. Jackson Tank Destroyers coming in for a nice flank shot there from the north. Tiger in a lot of trouble. One of the T-34s does end up going down. The Tiger's taking a massive punishment here. The Yak Tiger is in range to support. The Yak Tiger can take some shots at the approaching tanks, but the Jackson Tank Destroyers are not able to finish off the uh, Tiger. Who's in your squad retreating? And the second Tiger also made it out of there alive. It's back home getting repaired. Yak Tiger holding in the center. A little bit of a risky maneuver. It's not currently being supported by anything. I mean, we have a, bit, a little bit further behind the stolen 50 cal machine gun covering the flank, which I guess is nice. But yeah, that Yak Tiger needs to back off a little bit more. Major pushing up. The Major is still Veteran C2, which saddens me. I would like to see it be higher in Veteran C now. And we, uh, we only have two repair stations left up in the north. One is down about half strength. And as lonely conscript from one conscript squad is getting repaired, I mean getting uh, the fuel point captured. Yak Tiger in the center moving in a very awkward angle. We see a flank run coming in by the Yaks and Tank Destroyers. If they actually push... Well... Uh, excuse me, sorry about that. A little, little bit of oxygen there. Uh, if they go for the uh, for the push right now, they would be in horrible shape as there are three Grand Squads supporting here. And they would all get fousted and eliminated because they would be moving very slowly. So for now, Siberian is just setting up. It does have two of them in prioritizing uh, vehicles. One of them is not, so it will shoot at the infantry. Which kind of sucks, uh, but, you know, doesn't affect too much because it doesn't actually hit anything. MB-42 covering the center victory point. Down in the south, we see... All troop and squads being utilized to recapture territory as we have uh, paratrooper squads uh, going for the cap. T-34 is up in the north, still only two in count, going for the crush of those grand squads. The grand squads taking a little bit of a beating force to retreat. Retreating cancels out the ability to get crushed, and they make it out of their alive just fine. Grenade does go off into the paratroopers. The paratroopers down south, we see a... Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was like, something is getting bombarded. And that would be from the breakthrough doctrine of Mr. Boss. Yeah, he has the assault artillery. And that is just annihilating all the repair stations here. We still have one up there. Get smoke now, but there you go. Oh, Yak Tiger getting rammed there by one of the T-34s. The Jackson Tank Destroyer is moving up to get a flank on that Yak Tiger. They actually need to push forward a little bit more. We see... Something getting called in by Siberian. What is it? It is the... Oh, the P-47 rocket strafe. There goes hit. They're getting nice hits there on that uh, Yak Tiger. The Yak Tiger getting some hits in on the Yaks and Tank Destroyers. The Yaks and Tank Destroyers trying as much as they can to get the kill there on that Yak Tiger. But they're not able to get the penetration, which is very unfortunate for them. Second T-34 goes down. We now have Siberian losing all his tanks, which is unfortunate. Still has one, but I mean, he's losing them, is what I'm saying. And the P-47 rocket strafe gets some more damage in there on those Tigers. Down goes one of the uh, one of the tank destroyers. 
And the T-34 up in the north did end up going down to this Tiger. The Axon Tank Destroyers may be able to pick up the kill on one of these Tigers. There goes the kill. We do have a uh, AT gun on the field for Von Ivan. And Rocket Stray Varach goes down and gets the other Tiger. So both Tigers have been eliminated. The Yak Tiger is still alive and it's still a big threat, but not a bad pickup there for the uh, for the Allies. They uh, take severe losses. We see that Von Ivan essentially has nothing to support with. He needs more fuel to be able to continue to push. He does manage to get the cap of this northern point and is getting a... Uh, well, it's getting it uh, decap right now, but... Yeah. AT gun being utilized by Von Ivan to capture points because he does not have any infantry anymore. Still has a conscript on the field, the Veteran C3, not getting reinforced just yet. It looks like he wants to hold his manpower, although now he's getting reinforced, so maybe not. T-34 once again back on the field for Von Ivan. But the Soviet industry is not looking in great shape. AT gun up in the north also getting cleared out for Fusiliers or by Fusiliers. Going to back off a little bit, but it's only supported by uh, Jacksons. And the Jacksons, again, they're pretty horrible against infantry. Paratrooper squad for Siberian. At least we do have a lot of troops there for the U.S. forces. Getting a bit of a flank there on those uh, Fusiliers. They are forced to retreat quickly. Otherwise, they would have gotten cut off. AT gun down to about two men. Or all, exactly two men. I don't know why I said two. About. Uh, T-34 moves up. Gets shot by a Rakitenwerfer or the Yak Tiger. Well, considering the range, it looks like it may have been the, uh, the Yak Tiger. Rifle grenade goes off by the uh, rifles, the anti-tank rifle grenade, I should say, on the Yak Tiger, but it only bounces off the surface and does not damage the engine. Uh, rear echelon squad getting eliminated in the center there as that mine got detonated in its face. Incendiary rounds getting activated there on that MG42. Even though they do appear, they also do quite a bit of damage there to the infantry. And we also have a Joetta Panzer headquarters covering the center point for the Germans. Victory points are 370 for the Germans, 227 for the Allies. So still a 100-point lead there. Even more, almost almost 150 for the, um, for the Germans. Jackson Tank Destroyer, once again, another one getting produced. Major still being utilized around the field of cap. And we have a lot of infantry for the German forces. Three Grens out here with a fourth Gren somewhere else. Two Ostruppen squad. Four Fusiliers, two Storm Pioneers, and a Volksgren squad. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of German infantry on the field. Grand squad's catching the Major out of position as he was trying to cap. Down to two men, may lose another one on the retreat, but a lot of health still left, so that uh, Major will be fine. Major does get eliminated, but his runner, well, he runs and makes it out of there alive. Uh, Struppen squad getting crushed there by the, uh, by the Jacksons. Not the Michael Jacksons. <laughs> well, not the family, but the tanks, destroyers. Uh, Volkswagen squad up in the north with Trex getting some damage in there on those Jackson tank destroyers. Having trouble there with the padding on that Jackson Tank Destroyer. Moves out of the way, but... Well. Another repair station will be going down. T-34 now finally getting another guy to replace it. What else does the, uh, does the Doctrine give you? A KB-2 Heavy Assault Tank? Seems... Iffy to get, but, well... I would assume that the Yak Tiger has more range than the KV-2, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't see the KV-2 too often. AT gun up in the north. Gets some nice uh, barrage shots there on that Fusilier squad. But the Fusiliers do manage to clear it out regardless. Yak Tiger pushing forward up to the north. We have a T-34 moving up, only to get itself shot in the face. Now backing off, but it'll probably not make it out of there alive. We have another Tiger on the field for Mr. Glasses, but... It doesn't manage to get the kill on T-34. The, uh, the Daxons do get some shots off there on that Tiger. The Tiger gets some penetrations on itself and is forced to retreat. Rolling some uh, trees on the way and getting some more damage on its face. Yeah, three Daxons are very difficult to deal with with any amount of armor because they just do so much damage so quickly. So it... um. 
Damn, it's difficult. Grand's up in the north, going for some capping. Sorry, down south we have a machine gun. What is that? That is the uh, the stolen 50 cal machine gun from Boyce, uh, covering the uh, southern point, southern uh, fuel point. And we have paratrooper squads moving around to cap. Major in the center, barely makes it out of there. It's a, it's a major itself, but he does make it out. Uh, vehicle crews trying to repair the tanks as quickly as they can. A little bit exposed here. They're not supported by any infantry, but they could get into their tanks rather quickly, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, paratrooper squad getting called in? Yeah. Paratrooper squad getting called in for Siberian. It does land right in front of a Grand squad, but it's still alive and it's fine. Paratrooper squad down south of the fuel point. They uh, may have already thrown a grenade, but they could throw a grenade. 50 cal machine gun does get it suppressed and it will get it pinned down eventually. Grand squad moves into support. It's already pinned down, so the Grands have easy pickings right on top of the... Uh, Paratrooper squad, but they do retreat, staying alive. Jackson's up in the north, still moving around. The uh, the allies not managing to break through the lines very easily. We do have that Yak Tiger on the field, which is making it very difficult. AT gun up in the north, getting uh, getting recovered or uh, salvaged by the uh, the Storm Pyres for voice, which is is such a nice thing to be able to do. I mean. You don't have to worry about destroying the weapon. You don't have to worry about recruiting it. You just go salvage it and get just stuff for yourself. AT gun getting now. Oh, oh, that AT gun didn't stand a chance. The uh, Stone Pyro squad got eliminated, however. But yeah, I mean that AT gun now getting focus fired as it wants to get salvaged. Jacksons moving down through the south. The. Uh, the Yak Tiger does have massive range. We do have T-34s nearby to also provide some support. But the Jacksons are forced to back off as they take some pretty nasty shot there by Shrex. And um, the Yak Tiger shot flies at a distance, but very slowly from the Yak Tiger. That looked like slow motion shot. But nails the, uh, the T-34. T-34 backs off, gets himself in range of the uh, repair crews. But keep in mind that the repair crews are not able to repair in the middle of a fight. A ram goes off by the T-34 onto the Tiger, only managing to inflict a little bit of a crew shock. Tiger re uh, recovers itself, eliminates the T-34. One T-34 got abandoned, now out of control and destroyed. The, uh, the Jacksons down south are trying to get repaired, but the Jacksons are not in any shape to uh, push. And they are unable to get any kills, not even on the Tiger. The Tiger is still at about 75% strength. And the Yak Tiger up north is holding strong at 90% strength. The Fusiliers are going to move up on the AT gun and going to recrew it. So boys decides to actually go for the uh, cap of that weapon instead of destroying it. And yeah, the, uh, the Allies are in bad shape. We now see Von Ivan starting to invest once again on infantry. His uh, industry is not paying off, and he's not able to keep his tanks alive for it to pay off. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he's going to go try to stop the infantry. He's spamming Maxim machine guns right now with his uh, manpower. Maxim machine guns, not a bad choice. I mean, it will be able to stop those, uh, those infantry squads with it and potentially recover territory. But, I mean, the Yak Tiger... I mean, I guess it's not too big of a threat, but the uh, the simple fact that we now have two Yak Tigers is, you know, is bad enough. I mean, even though they uh, they won't do too much, I mean, they're still going to do a bit. It's hard to deal with them. Jackson's moving up in the north, trying to get a nice flank there on that. Hey, wait, no, that's a panther. Why did I say Yak Tiger? Wow, I'm stupid. Yeah, forget what I said. That's just a panther. Panthers are nice, but they're no uh, they're no Yak Tiger. Yak Tiger getting repaired in the center. Panther making an exit. We still have those Jacksons. The Jackson getting repaired up in the north. Very low in health, but it's now being supported by the uh, conscripts nearby. Conscripts Ura forwards trying to get themselves in range of that Yak Tiger. 18 is going to be going off. Can they actually get the crit? No, it bounces off the frontal armor, and that is it. We have a Tiger coming in for the flank on the Jacksons. We still have two Jacksons online. Jacksons getting a lot of damage there on that Tiger. Tiger manages a penetration. Tiger down to about 35% strength. We do have another Jackson, although 
Is that four or is that the same one? No, that's four. The other one up in the north is still getting repaired. Yeah, four Jacksons will wreck house against uh, any type of tank. Fuselliers and Volksgrenz coming in for a flank on that Maxim Machine Gun. Maxim Machine Gun going to get cleared out. We have a combat engineer squad with flamethrowers for support, but the Volksgrenz are nearby. Grenade goes off on the AT gun. The AT gun or pack gun, stolen pack gun gets decrewed. We have a uh, Stuka. What is it? Yeah, Stuka close air support throwing a barrage there on that combat engineer squad. Combat engineers go down. <laughs> Molotov flies wildly, but doesn't get too much. And we still have that Yak Tiger in the field, and Yak Tiger is. Yeah. Tiger and Panther trying to get some repairs there by the Mechanized Regiment headquarters. KV-8 getting called onto the field for Von Ivan. A very bold move. I mean, it will be able to deal with infantry. And, I mean, it's not a bad choice considering that he can use it to open up uh, flanks down south. For example, we see the 50 cal machine gun and even Grenz down south. And we have nothing in the way of vehicles or anti-tank measures down south. So, this is great, but I fear it may be too little too late here for the Allied forces. We see that they are down to 14, 13 points at this stage. And they are running out of army. We have uh, Jackson's getting repaired up in the north. Uh, we still have a Jackson over here decrewed as we have a uh, vehicle crew going off somewhere. Oh, it ended up having to repair. I mean, retreat. So, yeah, there's a Jackson tank destroyer fully operational up in the north, which could be stolen there by Panzer Fusiliers. But it looks like the crew may be going in that direction. Jackson's moving up north. They're not going to be able to provide too much support as there's only infantry nearby. And Jackson's are bad against infantry. But with four points left, three points left, and they are desperately trying to go for the cap. No infantry going down south or the center. That is going to be all she wrote. Panther moving down south. Zero points now. And that is it. So the German forces scoring a victory against the Allied forces of Von Ivan and Siberian. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.